Block chords. Yes, we're talking about block chords. Block chords. Okay. Hey, look, there's a block chord. It looks upside down to me, but hopefully it looks right side up to you. C, B, E, A, D. And there's your major seventh, major ninth, major six, nine. It's basically a major 13, because you got root, major seventh, third, sixth, ninth. And if I just move the seventh, I got a dominant seven, 13. And if I move the third, I've got a minor six, nine. Um, and, oh, hey, if I move the seventh back, there's a minor major ninth, minor ninth, <laughs> minor ninth chord with a six, um, minor 13th, minor major 13th, sure. Um, <clears throat> but, and so it's usually one version of the voicing is root seventh, third, sixth, ninth. Sometimes instead of the sixth, having the fifth in there, if you like. And actually, at some point tonight, we're gonna to talk about sixth chords again, because they're my favorite chords, minor triads with the third and the bass. Um, and how you can make them a little bit less Pythagorean, you can make them a little less fifthy by leaving the fifth out. Makes sense, right? Okay, um, but, one, the other thing that you'll see is if you're going down circle of fifths, hey, let's make this a C seventh, uh, C 13. So C, B flat, E, A, D. Okay, so all I gotta do now, right, is I'm gonna go to F, and let's just go make it blues, and go to the, the, to the next bar, right? The second bar of the blues, right? So I went from C seven, C 13, and now, F13. And all I did, yeah, was move two notes, right? Well, wait, I moved the root too, so three notes. But these top notes stay. See that? And one thing that's really cool and very common, oh wait, where was I? So here's C, uh, C7, 13, C13, right? And now I'm going to my, uh, my F chord, right? So F13. Oh, actually, that's gonna move like that. I'm gonna do that again. Okay. Yo. Oh, you're recording right now. Quick yes. question. Um, yeah. The C13, does that assume that there's a dominant seventh and a ninth in there? Um, oh, that's a good question. Not always the ninth, but if you say C13, it's a dominant chord. Okay. You say, I mean, C major 13, I guess people say that. Like, that's like a real, like, that's really getting into like jazz chord names, which uh, there's a lot of variation in that, uh, in those names because they were named here and there and everywhere. Like, it's not like with classical music where there was like, you know, some Germans and the French people getting together in Belgium somewhere and agreeing on what they were gonna call stuff. Yeah. Like, or, you know, or like looking back through the documents, it, it sort of happened a little more democratically, I, I guess. Oh, um, yeah, sorry about the tangent there. Nah, it's cool. It's a good one. Um, not at all. So C13. Oh, hey, I'm going to move that. And so you get some nice voice leading. The seventh of the C7, C13, moves to the third. And that's what you have when you move down a fifth, the seventh of the of the dominant is going to move to the third of the tonic. And then I'm just moving the bass up a fourth. Down a fifth, inverted, yeah. And then um, we have in the right hand, the, the E just moves to the E flat. So it doesn't actually change notes, but it's flatted. It's the same note, you know, E and E flat. Um, but change the pitches. And then the A goes down to the G because otherwise we're doubling that A. So we get C13, F13, right? And you can basically move around all over the place if you're reasonably good with these block chords using just those two formations of chords, right? Using either the root and the seventh in the bass or the root and the third in the bass and using either um, uh, third, six, nine up top, or seven, nine, six up top. So it flips them. And um, here you have third, six, nine, 
Here you have seven, nine, six. So, and you can move all around and get reasonably decent voice leading and it sounds pretty good and you know, you'll have some leaps and kind of stuff and I don't, you know, I really don't practice this stuff so I'm kind of familiar with it and have played it from time to time but um, the, and they also lay out good, they lay out good on guitar. They lay out pretty well on guitar. I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, but there's one other thing I wanted to say about that, which was, we'll return after this message. This discussion of block chords was brought to you by Ahmad Jamal. Okay, fine. So uh, let's look at some guitar stuff now because uh, that's what we're really here for. So, hey, look, here's, here's that same C713 chord. Oh, I remembered what I wanted to say. Ahmad Jamal reminded me. So, and then here is, hey, this is super familiar. This is no, this is, this is n nothing surprising. Hey, these are block chords. And a cool thing that you can do with block chords, and I'll show you on the piano after this, is that, oh look, watch, I'm gonna move my pinky. I'm gonna go like this, and then I'm gonna go like this, and then I'm gonna go like this. And that's a super common move. And this would be C713, so that's C, okay, hold on. Oh wait, it would help if I put the right hand camera on the right hand. Okay, why not? How about that? You can maybe almost see the strings, except now this camera's in the way of that camera. This is very complicated. Okay. C13, F9. On the way, hey, we're gonna play C7, flat nine, flat 13, F9. Oh, I could add the 13, put it back. So check this out, listen to this. It's beautiful. That's a whole lot of notes coming out of a guitar. A guitar player might stay out of the way of the bass player by just playing. Just leaving the roots out. Cause who, you know, you don't need the root. You got a bass player, get out of the way. And I could play this. So now I'm just playing, oh, hey, you can see it with, with the thumb there, but. I'm just playing the top parts. I'm not playing the roots of the chords. And then check this out. Uh, wait, where is it? Right. But I could also do this. Like so. And you hear that, you know, guitar players play that all the time because you can, they can, it's easy to move those little chunks around. All those things, right? <clears throat> if we were here, down here, this is the other inversion of it. Before we were talking about having either the root and the seventh in the bass, root, seventh, and now down here, we have the root and the third down in the, in the left hand of the piano. So there's your other inversion of this block chord. Big fat chords, right? A little bit closer. Don't break your hand playing that. Oh my gosh, and then this is pretty cool. Oops. Clearly, I haven't played that in a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you're back to the voicing you started with before. So this is C13, and then this is C7 flat 9, flat 13, F13. And these are what some folks would call tritone substitutions. I don't really like that term, but it's useful. Um, and the idea being that this right here, if I take away the root here, this C, this right there is an F9 chord, right? F sharp, sorry, F, F sharp 9 chord, or probably more usefully called a G flat 9 chord because it's going to drive us to this F9 chord. And I just switched to a bar because I'm finger picking and I can mute that A string with my thumb there. So I've got OC 13 and then this is that flat nine, flat 13 thing because I'm borrowing from minor. That's the whole thing with tritone subs is you're borrowing from minor or borrowing from Phrygian. And so what you're doing here is 
this is all, you know, C13. You could call all of this mixolydian. You've got C, E, B flat, D, and A. There's no four. You could put the, you know, that in there too if you wanted, the sharp 11, but Lydian dominant style. It's just those notes, but now when I borrow from minor, I'm gonna have those minor tones. So now I've got in the key of C, we're going from the bar one to the bar two of the blues. One to four, C, D flat, E flat, E natural. It's uh, depending on context, whether you want to call that F sharp or G flat, G, A flat, B flat. And uh, so there's that C utility Phrygian. for minor is all it is you just got to think in the minor key of f because i'm just borrowing from those minor notes f b f g a flat b flat c d flat e flat utility minor the e natural as well so you have your harmonic minor all right so you play this c and And then you go to your, oh. So I went through basically mixolydian, C mixolydian, to sort of F minor over this altered chord. Other people would call this an altered chord because you have altered the sixth and the ninth. Okay, that's it. That's everything there is to know about jazz. See you next week. What? What? Utility minor? What? Okay, fine. Utility minor. Uh, let's go back to the guitar and uh, maybe put a little light on it. Okay, so um, utility minor. <clears throat> um, what's that all about? Okay, uh, key of... Well, we were kind of thinking an F there, so I'll just put it in the people's key. G7, C. So if you're here on your G7, you know, you could play kind of a Freddie Green style voicing. I'm playing the sixth string root, seventh on the fourth string, third on the uh, third string, and uh, fifth on the second string. And then I'm just gonna resolve that to a, just, a, a, just a good old C. Sure, I can go there too. Why not? Well, with this G7 chord, I've got no extensions whatsoever, so I have not flavored them. And this would be a good loop to make because then you can practice without borrowing for minor and then borrowing for minor. And the idea is that over the five chord, over this G7, well, you can play it just like you're in the key of C and you can be like, I slipped one little passing tone in there, but otherwise I was good and just played in C major. So that's all just, yeah, there's a little bit of blues in there, but I'm basically playing C major scales, you know? If you want to make it sound um, more jazzier, then what you can do is you can think, okay, C major, the parallel key, minor key of C major is C minor. And the notes of that are C, D, E flat, 
F, G, A flat, B flat, C. And then, so that's natural minor. Harmonic minor would be C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B natural C so that we can get that third of that C chord to C minor. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, natural seven, one. And hey, I like both flavors. Why can't I have both flavors? Can't I have both flavors, Dad? Sure you can. Swirl them up. It's called Utility Minor, at least by W.A. Matthew. And it just means that you've got both sevenths. So you've got one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, natural seven. Oh, oh what's gonna happen next? Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's the stuff. So, and it's really fun. I just had fun. To play from that seventh to that natural seventh, but it doesn't play well in the classical books, but we don't care, we're not playing classical music. And there you go. And that's called borrowing from minor, because what I did was I landed on in the major key. We were, you know, maybe playing a two five. Oh, please, no. And so maybe on that two chord, and you're just playing straight up C major. Some folks, because they're on the D minor chord, are gonna insist on calling that D Dorian, which is just kind of silly because you're just on the D chord in the key of C. And then when you get to the G7 chord, You borrow from minor, you borrow from the parallel minor key, utility minor. Oh, or you could borrow from Phrygian if you're feeling really naughty. Okay. So there you go. And that is what, um, what the jazz nerds like to talk about as uh, playing the butter notes. All of these block chords that we're talking about and this concept right there of borrowing from minor of the five chord, that's playing the butter notes. That's, play, that's the bread and butter. And it sounds smooth and it's brought to you by, yes, Errol Garner, Ahmad Jamal, Oscar Peterson, Red Garland, one of my personal favorites. Oh, so many of these brilliant geniuses. So, all right, have fun playing the butter notes. That's everything you need to know about jazz. See you next week.